JTV Cruiser, let's go, yo. What's up, beautiful people? Today, as y'all can tell by the title, we're gonna be checking out Geography Now Spate. Hey, what's up, amigos? Hopefully, y'all doing good on that side of the screen. As I did post on um, Instagram, I'm taking a little break from like music reactions or reactions in general, but you know what I'm saying? This one popped up last minute, so you know what I'm saying? Your boy thought, hey, let me just slide this one in, you know? Taking a little break just to recalibrate myself, but I ain't doing no long talking. Cause this one is heli long 33 minutes with half an hour, god damn bro. But with our further family crew straight into Alright, Spain. I, I do know a lot about Spain, but country. hey, we all Along do. with France and Italy, it is one of the three powerhouse Latin countries of Europe. Portugal, we love you, man. You're cool and awesome, but like, let's be real, you're kind of like the mini boss before the. Okay, I'll just stop right there. Anyway, <laughs> over 500 million shit. people across the world speak Spanish, and if you include the mestizos, a huge chunk of that population have actual descendants and ancestors from Spain. So it's not just language, it's also like genetically, Spain got busy and made a big ass <laughs> family across the world. Yeah. In any case, Yo. welcome to the original kingpin of the Hispanic world. Spain. You know, before we carry on in this video, you know one thing I didn't know until I like kind of dating or kind of seeing a Moroccan woman. I did not know Spain <laughs> actually has. Careful, I mean, brothers in Morocco, you know, we love you and all that, but this one's light traded on, you know what I'm saying? I'm sure there's some pretty cool friction going on there. I'm just saying from what I know, don't shoot your boy, you know what I'm saying? But actually, like, Spain has like. Spanish turf in Morocco, like on the side, like literally in Morocco. Like, that's wild. Like, I didn't know that until I, you know, she told me. I'm trying, and apparently some friction going on. You know, but you know, may my find out. It's time to learn geography. Hey everybody, I'm your host Barb's. Don't forget to get geography. Hey, big up. It's been a long time. Com. So Spain, everything from the freezing glaciers of Patagonia to the freezing glaciers of Alaska have at some point been imprinted upon by the notorious Spanish seal. And of course, it's always great to have people from the country in the country episodes. And with that, here's Jose and Anna. Say hi to Hello, everyone. Hi. All right, so where are you guys from? I'm Anna, and I'm from Valencia. I'm Jose, and I'm from Catalonia, from a town called Blanes. Uh-oh. Yeah, I was about, uh, yo, there's a lot of, yo, there's a lot of going on here in Spain. I just noticed this, man. Yeah, Catalonia. What's going on? <laughs> Not something about paella. We'll, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> All right. All so this shall independence we, uh, and Oh man, sticky one. No. Still. No. <laughs> uh, well, I'll make it up to you guys with some cervezas. <laughs> okay. Fee. I got it. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, you're lucky we're here. Because if not, you will be f***ing it up all the time. No, here we go. Skip that. This is so interesting. This is the first time I've had two hosts on the show at the same time. <laughs> like, we're all like, yeah, each other. oh well. Now, we've covered a lot of countries that have loose forms of administrative division within their political regions, but with Spain, I kind of see it like a teacher with a really rowdy classroom. It's like, hey, you kids, you stop that. Galicia, <laughs> hey, hey, you stop talking to me. Like Galicia. Basque and Navarre, I don't know what, what is that? Hey, you know one thing. I'm a fan of Pull and Bear. You know their merch and ish. I mean their clove wear. Apparently, Pull and Bear is from is from Galicia. I didn't know that. But Galicia, hey, hey, you stop talking to Portugal. <laughs> Navarre, I don't know what you're talking about. Rioja, you stop drinking wine. Extra Maduro, do you even exist? Valencia, hey, you stop burning everything right now. What about Tori Guinea? What about the window? Apparently, they're part of like the loser phones, even though they speak Spanish in you know African country. I Oh, you little. Uh, no, but for real, the people in Spain just know who they are and they own it. Loki and with that, me. let's go I'm to sure the animation. Watch the Portugal. All right, Spain is located in now. Western Europe, taking up about 82% of the Iberian Peninsula, shared with Portugal to the west, the oh. Bay of Biscay to the north, and to the south, subsections of the Mediterranean, known as the Balearic and Alberon Seas, and inland, the Pyrenees Mountains separate them from France and Andorra. Andorra. Keep in mind, they even have this small little exclave in France called Yvia, cut off by about 1.6 kilometers Damn. of space to the Spanish border That's on nuts. the N-154 highway. Up north on the Bidasoa River, Spain also shares an island with France called Isla de los Faisanes, or Pheasant Island. In like, how did they decide they wanted that little shape there, just that little part? Hey, the, bold, 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 yeah. the sovereignty switches every six months. Those what? aren't the only countries that the border them. Pidasoa River. Spain also shares an island with France right. called Isla de los Faisanes, or Pheasant Island, in which the sovereignty switches every six months. Those aren't the only countries that border them, though. In the southeast, by La Linea de la Concepcion, you find this peninsula, Gibraltar, which yeah. is actually an overseas territory of the UK that they have had since 1713 with the Treaty of Utrecht. In addition, Spain also has the Plazas de Sobre. And what's the situation with Gibraltar and, like, the UK and Spanish? Like, did it 
I'm sure like people from Gibraltar just want to stay as being part of the UK, right? Or are they thinking like Spain wanting it, wants it back kind of, I mean, I don't know. Ania, or strongholds of sovereignty, section. historical places in Northern Africa that date back to the inception of modern Spain in the 15th century and they hold on to. They include the two exclave autonomous cities of Ceuta and Melilla, yeah, yeah. which are effectively attached to Morocco. Oh, in addition, there are also eight other islands and one penis. But how do you Moroccans feel about that? Like, hit me up in the comment section too, man. Peninsula, known as Peñón de Vélez de la Gomera. The peninsula is divided by a 100 meter wide sand bridge. Bro, that's makes it one of the of shortest thing. international borders in the world. Mm. From there, Spain also has two main archipelagos, the Canary Islands Ooh. off the coast of Morocco, and again, of course, the Balearic them. Islands in the Mediterranean. Due to the positioning of the Canary Islands... Hey, you know in the Canary Islands, that I love the Canary Islands as a whole, you know what I'm saying, but my favourite is like, I'm not being biased, I'm just being straight up with you, but uh, La Gomera, oh man. Apparently they whistle, blood. They used to whistle like when people in the mountain, what well, I, I probably still do, they whistle and, and people that are down below in the mountain actually know what they're saying by whistle. That took me away, bro. I'm telling y'all. Kind of low-key reminds me of like Madeira, like the landscapes and niche, but that was, bro, tra trust me. It's expensive to go there from where I am, be at, you know? But it's definitely a, worth a, a place to go. Cause everyone seems to go to Lanzarote, Fuerteventura, uh, Canary Islands, of course, you know, yeah, Tenerife, but the other islands, like, not really, but it's popular, but trust me, if you're a, like a nature person, you know, wanting to know more and wildlife and shit like that, man. Lagomera is my tip to y'all, you know, personally, I've never this been to mainland Spain or any of them. time but. zones, UTC 0 and plus 1. With that, Spain breaks down a little interesting. The country like is classified Azul, as a um, decentralized unitary Portugal. state in which although sovereignty is vested in one nation, the regional institutions hold their own high degree of self governance and have their own parliaments and presidents. These 17 entities are called autonomous communities or autonomies in short. Delta and Melilla are categorized Slam. as autonomous Slam. cities Slam. and have the right to become communities, but so far have not expressed interest in doing so. The capital and most populous Wait, city up. What? No, express, interesting and have the right to become have an or here. autonomies in short. Delta and Melilla are categorized as autonomous cities and have the right to become communities but so far have not expressed oh. interest in doing so. The capital and most populous city and highest capital in Europe is Madrid in of the course. center of the country. Like literally it is. There's even a floor <laughs> plaque called the Puerta del Sol which serves as kilometer zero for all the roads and train networks that radiate outwards from yeah. the central hub. And of course Madrid holds the biggest and busiest airport. Adolfo Suarez, Madrid, Barajas, International. From there the second largest city is Barcelona on the Mediterranean coast, where the second busiest airport can be found, Barcelona El Prat International. From there, the busiest shipping port is the port of Argeciras Bay, where over 100 million tons of cargo pass annually. Finally, fun fact, some parts of Spain are actually antipodes of New Zealand, which means they are literally located exactly Say across what? the entire planet from each other. So, fun fact, Canary Island are not named after Canaries, but rather oh. dogs, because of the Latin can. Which means dog. What means dog? Like <laughs> that. That was marginally Bye -bye. interesting. Like now, we're not going to dive too much into it because it would take forever, he but why so many autonomies? Well, historically, Spain had a few major kingdoms before they unified. And this yeah. is basically how they separate places that either have a very distinct people group versus places that were are more in sync with Madrid. So quick question, quick question, quick question. What came first, Portugal or Spain? Hit me up in the comment section. I don't even know that. I've, I, I used to say, well, I say it's Spain and then it was Portugal. I mean, divided after, but... I don't know, like the mainline Portugal history, you know. I'm just saying. And speaking of which, it's fourth. Spain is a monarchy. Yes, one of the twelve monarchies of Europe. Basically, most people will say it all started when Isabella de Castile married Ferdinand of Aragon, unifying the two biggest powerhouses of the Iberian Peninsula. Even though they kind of pissed off the Pope because they were second cousins and did not dispensate <laughs> their marriage, which led them to curse oh, the Spanish shnay. people for all eternity. But then they waited for the next. Pope oh my God! God left trying to hold his so his anyway, the love. point is, after millennia of going through the Phoenicians, Rome Romans, the Suevi, whatever those guys were, Vandals and Alans, Visigoths, the Moors and Umayyads, Moors, modernish yeah. Spain started to take shape in the 1400s with a Reconquista or Reconquering. And from there the story gets crazier. How so? You sure you're not bored with all this history stuff? No, Normally no. I would be, but all the pictures and the fast meta talk uh, holds my attention and makes me think I'm learning. Thank you for revealing my script writing structure, but anyway, fine, if you insist. After the Reconquista, the sexy Habsburgs slipped into the royal family because that's what they did throughout everybody in Europe. And when their line ended, the House of Bourbon, a friend's dynasty slipped in. And here we are today with Philippe Six and his daughter, Princess Leonor, next in. in line. In any case, Spain is a travel hotspot. They are literally the second most visited country on Europe? Earth after oh. France. 
world. With more than 83 million people reported as of 2019. It's important to know that Spain has third highest number of UNESCO World Heritage in Sites. Well, you know, I'm still the autonomy of Andalusia has one. the most at seven. Now we all know some of the obvious UNESCO sites like the Alhambra, the Great Mosque of Cordoba, the Guggenheim. He's saying like we all know, like say I'm supposed to know that, you know, about, uh, I don't know, you know, what I'm saying? Like you tell me. Which has been under construction for like 130 years. It would take way too long to cover all the UNESCO sites, but here's a list of some non-UNESCO sites you guys suggested we mention in the episode. The Royal Palace in Madrid. Centenil de las Bodegas. Valencia's Arts and Science District. Theme parks like Puerto Ventura mm, and Dark Corner and Texas Jeez. Hollywood. The Canary Texas Island Hollywood. Hot Pyramid, Mummies Say and what? the Neptune Statue. The Wooden Mushroom Thing in Seville, Metropole Parasol. Madrid claims to have the oldest continuously operating restaurant in the world. Cadiz is the oldest city. And fake Germany, Mallorca and fake Pit UK, Germany. Ibiza. Oh, and yeah. so on. Yeah, that list doesn't even... Yeah, you see me, when I go foreign, like, I don't mind these people that speak English or English people that are over there, UK people them, you know what I'm saying? But sometimes, like, when you're living in the UK or you've been in a place for so long, sometimes you want to go to a place that's not, like, your, you know, like, like... That's why you go on holiday, man. It's not like you're going... You get what I'm saying. Dick Spain justice because it's not even a small fraction of the big picture. One part of that picture, oh, though, is the landscape and resources. Which brings it... So, since Spain has territories in Africa, the ocean, and Europe, it's transcontinental, so we have like many different landscapes. landscapes. Like, we even have a restaurant that cooks food over an active volcano. But we're getting a... That's, that's like Cazuz Islands. You, you know, check me out. Like, I'm an island boy, you feel me? Mixed. You know, some of y'all maybe know, but my upbringing, my culture, like my traditions, and every food that I've ate or eaten, like not being in the UK, I mean being back home, in my island, everything's like wood, not like in stoves. I'm saying, and volcano actually took me away. I mean, I know about this part about Lanzarote and volcano. I actually bumped into that when I was watching the Portuguese geography now, and probably it's like before I even watched that, but Azores Islands. They also have that, like, they cook food within volcano, thinks the steam or whatever. That, that's something I really want to try. I want to know what is the different taste in. Car, you already know stove, if you've you already experienced, you know, stove and food on, you know, made in wood, by wood, you know, fire. And, you know, is it has a different taste. For me personally, I prefer it. Maybe I'm just used to it. But I want to know the difference. Ahead of ourselves, let's go to the anime. Is it better? First of all, for is the continental you know? part, the country is incredibly mountainous. In fact, the second most mountainous country in Europe after Switzerland. The country has six main ranges the well, Benthic okay. chain in the south, the central and Iberian chains in the center, the Cantabrian and Leon chains in the north, and the Pyrenees in the northwest, with the border of France and Andorra. In the center, you have the Meseta Central Plateau, a wide highland that stretches wide across the interior. As you can clearly see from space, the northern part of Spain has the most lush green wet zones. Yeah, middle's and more dry. south, the country obviously gets more dry and arid. Okay. In fact, Spain has the oh. only true desert of mainland Europe, the Tabernas Desert, located in Andalusia, which holds the highest temperatures of mainland Europe at over 40 degrees Celsius Say, in the summer. Bro. These mountains are essentially a oh, byproduct no. of Spain being located Like, I like the heat, but all year round, just normal, like, say, not passing 28 degrees and not going lower than 21. Cushy, that's where I need to be living at, you know what I'm saying? In the future, hopefully, before I retire, <laughs> enjoy my life, you know what I'm saying? But, boy, them type of temperatures there, like, when I um, found out, like, Lisbon in the summer was, like, 42, 45, I'm like, no, bro, I can't even breathe. It comes like you're breathing in a bag, bro, okay? <laughs> and no air, I couldn't. Y'all used to it, I ain't. That's tough. I need island breeze. African and Eurasian tectonic <laughs> plates, creating a slew of minor rifts and fault lines. This means the southern part of Spain may occasionally experience earthquakes above six on the Richter scale, and certain Dang. areas, mostly along the Mediterranean, have extinct volcanoes. I've experienced the an earthquake before. That was nuts, the country, man. though, would actually be the Canary Islands, which the lie. What? Extinct volcanoes. The most active volcanic oh. area of the country, though, would actually be the Canary Islands, which lie on an interplate volcanic region on the African plate. Geologists mostly agree that the islands were created by the plates moving over a mantle hotspot, which bubbled up out of the ocean, much like and how created. the Hawaiian Islands were formed. Speaking uh, of islands, that, the highest. Madeira Islands was created like that. The point of the country Probably isn't Cape even on the Iberian Peninsula, enough. but rather the Canary Islands, part of the larger sub-region known as Macaronesia, with Boom. the Day, which is actually, Shut up, my Macaronesia gave me excited. actually the third highest Calm volcano down, in the world from its base. <laughs> Back to the mainland, though, the highest mountain on continental Spain would be Muracen, at nearly 3,500 meters high. From there, the longest river, shared with Portugal, is the Tagus, or... See, when it gets too hot, if you go up the mountains there, it won't be fresh, it will be 
It must be hot as hell. Tejo. However, the longest river entirely in Spain is the Ebro. Now, most of the inland bodies of water are reservoirs blocked up by dams on rivers. However, the largest natural freshwater lake would be Lake Sanabria in the northwest. Can Finally, you swim Spain in has three main climate zones on the continental part. The areas in the south Must have a warm, fresh. dry Mediterranean climate. The central Meseta Plateau has hot summers and cold winters. And the north Cantabrian mountains have a maritime climate with the most rain year round and snowfall in the winter. Mm -hmm. So, an extra side note after Malta, Spain so is the sunniest country in Europe. Who's it's the first? 60 days a year. That's hot. Damn. Yeah, that's hot. <laughs> <laughs> now with all yeah. these rugged lands, Spain hosts a wide range of flora and fauna differing by region. For example, the Canary Islands, you have the black sand beaches and the ancient tropical Lora Silva. It's only found in Macaronesia. Otherwise, in the... Yeah, I was about to say, if you was about, I've always about to say, it's only found in Caranaria. I was about to say, I was about to say Caribbean and Canary Islands mixed up together. That was a strange mix, bro. I got so much going on in my mind. These days, when I say something, it's a mix of both. Like, it's just crazy insane. But yeah, I thought it was, was about to say only Canary Islands, but I say, yeah, Madeira's got that too. Peninsula, you have everything Stop. ranging from See the similarities there, like it's it's and in the north to the shrubby rock deserts mm. of the south. Within these wide ranged zones, you have tons of natural treasures like caves, canyons, and even a river that flows orange Ooh, and red. Agriculture wise, Lit. they are the second largest producer of wine after Italy and the largest producer of olive oil in the world. Okay. On a fun side note, when they cook, only about 40% of Spanish homes have direct gas lines installed, and the rest usually have gas tanks delivered. Right? Oh, them ones, yeah, 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 yeah that's that's cool. Now we all know that despite having the third. 13th largest nominal GDP in the world, Spain has had quite a reputation for its rather, how can I put this? Recessive tendencies? <laughs> <laughs> yes, during the financial crisis, Spain was hit hard for about six years during 2008 and in 2014 yeah. they reached a height at about 27.2% unemployment. There are a lot of factors that went into this, but it kind of went... How can we grow our economy? We need to build a lot of stuff. Okay, what's the problem? The banks. What if we just let the banks report what they wanted and not regulate them as much? That's a great idea. Nothing could go wrong. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> and it did. Perfect. Yeah, good act and due to this lack of accountability, experts speculate that somewhere upwards to one fifth of the total GDP is somehow tied in with the undisclosed transaction industry black market, second only to Italy. No proud of that. You guys probably have a lot to say about that. No surprise, Spain. <laughs> Galicia. Is known for being the main port of entry for the European cocaine trade. A fun little fact. Jeez, man put in cocaine in their video. Crazy. What's Spain like? Is it safe? Over 90% of euros that are transacted in Spain have trace amounts of cocaine on them. <laughs> Damn, but well, you like can say that with any money, man. Yes, there was a study in Valencia. Almost, I mean, like, could be marijuana, could be, you know what I'm saying? It's community. But anyway, off of that, Spain is the These guys largest actually producer down of everything, wind bro. energy in the world. We even have the world's largest renewable energy operator, Iberdrola. We are the eighth largest automobile producer in the world and second largest manufacturer in Europe after Germany. We even have some of the domestic brands like Seat. Seat. Which is actually a subsidiary of Volkswagen, but let them have that one. And the incredibly <laughs> rare limited produce Ooh. an expensive GTA Spano. What else is rare in this country? Some of the animal species and with that, here's Gary Harlow to explain. I like Aston Martins though, and VW, you know what I'm saying? Well, too preferred. Right, it's Gary Harlow here. In Europe, Spain and Italy usually rank in the top two in regarding biodiversity. I mean, they've got tropical forests to desert, so there's lots of wildlife real estate. The country hosts 16 national parks, the largest one being the Sierra Nevada in the south. Like Portugal, they share the same type of famous Iberian animals here, like the Spanish Ibex and the wild boar. However, they're known for the Spanish Big Five, the bearded vulture, the Iberian lynx, the Iberian Damn. wolf, the That's imperial dope. eagle, and the Eagles. Eurasian brown bear. Man. The national animal, however, is a bull. Some might say yeah. a Hispanic lion. <laughs> Some historians claim that they might have inhabited... That's like one of their sports, isn't it? Where the toro, toro and it. Bro, I've seen some man get shanked with one of their bull's horns before <laughs> me. And that ish, I've seen some guys get it up there. And blood. Imagine getting crushed by that ish. I mean, I don't want to experience that, but that must be pain. Because you know how them big... And then there's full force. Oh, hell no. Southern... <laughs> 
Seem to spew lots of reptiles are endemic too, especially <laughs> on the island region. Man, this the Canary guy, Islands have about five native species of gecko. Local media. Blah, blah, blah. It was a very good impression of what was that about, about five native species of gecko. Blah, 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 blah. It was a very good impression of a gecko. <laughs> Otherwise, as a country that's in the path of migratory birds from Africa to southern Europe, there's over 630 so bird species. Speaking of migration, I've got to migrate out here, fading into the distance. <laughs> Now we're about to talk about the food of Finn. Before we do, you have to understand there's a few things. What is food poisoning Finn to you guys? What does that mean? What does it entail? Every meal kind of blends into the what? following meal. Next one. There's like a whole system, right? Mm -hmm. It starts with breakfast, maybe some churros and chocolate, and Ooh, then we'll have un aperitivo. And then you have lunch, okay, and lunch go. normally ends up with appetizer. what we call sobremesa, that it's like sobremesa, just yeah. talk. But you stay at the table. And you stay at the table. You don't have to go out of the, of the bar, or even if you're in a house, and then merienda, which is a little snack we have in the afternoon before dinner. So that's why we have dinner at 10 p.m. It just keeps Jeez, going. Never stop. stop. Never stop. We eat and then eat again and then maybe Yo, go. Some of y'all must have some good metabolism, but you all like that and still say, like, that ain't me, man. I only eat once a day, you know what I'm saying? I still always struggle to keep that weight up, but yo, I work out as hell. You know, dancing or something. But while you're dancing, you also <laughs> love food. Do you <laughs> flamenco with some... Probably. Fun fact, Spain is one of the countries in the world that has more bars per citizen. And you can even get beer at McDonald's, right? Yes. Damn, yeah. what? True. Yeah, that was so I hate beer, but damn. Anyway, and with that, here's uh, some food stuff with, uh, oh, guess who's back? Noah! Boom! Prior to the 15th century, Europeans had no idea that things like chocolate, corn, tomatoes, potatoes, avocados, and sugar even existed. Through the Spanish trade routes, the rest of the world introduced to these items, and now you can have things like pizza and fries. Include things like gazpacho, terethnos, churros, coqueta. What? Go back. If access to, include things like gazpacho, terethnos. Oh, that my mom loves these. It's like dry pork in it kind of thing. No, my type of forte, but my mom's, oh, she loves them. Nose, churros, coquetas, oh, machaco, cochinillo, arroz a la zamorana, hornaco, amon, fideuá, cocido, and tortilla. This is not the same as a tortilla in Latin America, though. This is a potato and egg dish. And probably oh, the most popular oh, dish taste nice. originated in yeah. Valencia. Yeah. And they are stripped with the way that it is made. They hate it when this happens. <laughs> For a size. Hey, can I have some of that paella? I've heard so much about it. Yeah, sure. It comes with extra muscles and shrimp. Because okay. that's paella. It does? Yeah. Okay, whatever, well, just take it. The true way to make it is either with rabbit or chicken. Otherwise, oh no, 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 not rabbit. Chicken would be cool with me, but that looks mm, delicious though. Kind of low key, like one of the pictures on the far left look like Indian food. The true way to make it, it is either with yeah, the one on the far left looks like some Indian type food. It looks dope. Rabbit or chicken. Otherwise, Valencians will call all the imposters arroz con cosas or rice with things. Well, that's all I got for you today. Until next time. Don't eat a paella in Madrid or Barcelona. But to eat the real one, go to Valencia. Probably after this, many people is gonna want to kill me. <laughs> I just buried myself. Fun fact, uh, sherry was also invented here, as was the Molotov cocktail, which played a huge role in the Spanish Civil War. Well, let's talk about the Spanish people now, shall we? Now, as I mentioned, there's a lot of different types of people in Spain and they all kind of have their own thing going on. In a way, we have this kind of quiet acknowledgement that unity doesn't mean uniformity. What do you guys think? Like, do you guys generally get along? <laughs> <laughs> I think they get along apart from if you start pulling up different conversations to do with touchy subjects or topics, you know? Yes. But yes. it's like everyone though. Yes. There's like these uh, stereotypes, things that oh, he probably is this way because he's from, from this place or he's probably you know? I'll say when I've met <laughs> Spanish people outside of Spain, we all love Spain and love everyone. Yeah. Um it just when we're in Spain we love to, you know, talk to each other. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh with that let's talk about the people of Spain in the graph. First of all, Spain has about forty eight million people and is the fifth most populous country in Europe and has the highest life expectancy in the OECD countries. The country is made up predominantly by people that identify as native Spaniard at about eighty eight percent. Keep in mind this label But nowadays who don't talk shit about whoever's from you know what i'm saying you probably get people from mainland talk about how people from islands act differently but it's all over the place right? uh, you, 
can get everywhere. It's very broad and pretty much pertains to a wide range of people with different physical traits, but mostly with a South European Mediterranean background in their racial makeup. Geneticists also have determined that the average Spaniard, especially in the South, has around 5% North African ancestry due to the Moorish conquests that took mm. over the country for seven like centuries. Canary, the remaining 12% of the country is made up of various immigrant groups that have settled over the centuries, the largest ones being Latin Americans at about 5%, North Africans and Eastern Europeans at about 2% each, and the remaining 3% from other places around the world like Asia and whatever. All yeah. right, so the official language of Spain is shocker Spanish, Spanish but specifically Castellano. Castilian or Castellano Spanish. Yeah, of course we... I swear there's a difference between the two, because like... If you go to Venezuela and you say to certain people like oh, I speak Castellano, they just say they don't know, it's not the same as Spanish. You feel me? Like I'm speaking from like experience of like my pops we used to live there for years. But you know, I don't know, some people may see it as a different I don't know. I just had these type of conversation with people before, so and then some people agree with it, some people don't. So I mean, I'm I can't really speak like I know, but have, some of you uh, can hit me up in the Spanish comment section. Spanish tell me if this like, which sounds a bit different it's than true. Latin American Spanish. Now keep in mind, most Latin American Spanish is heavily influenced by the Andalusian dialect of Spanish, as many people from those areas move. No, but that's normal. Everywhere you go, you're gonna have different accents, different ways of saying certain things, or probably certain different ways of like. Word replacements for certain things you'd say, like, like in Chile you would say "cachai," like instead of saying, "What do you say in Spain? Comprende?" Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, understand. So, you have their own little words. Long story that. short, what's the easiest way to piss off a Spaniard? Vale, voy a empezar mi nuevo proyecto en mi nuevo ordenador. Elige el idioma inglés, no, francés, no. <laughs> what was that? That went too fast. <laughs> Oh, that's, that is something else, bro. But you can say the same thing when it comes to selecting in some places you go to, like the Portuguese will be like a Brazilian flag, so. That's enough. I don't know, y'all might take it as an offense or something, but, but yo, I kind of, I feel the pain there, though. <laughs> hey, it's not Mexico's oh, fault they became a big deal in the Hispanic world. Anyway, on top of is that. Is it because there's more of a population in the world that, Mexican, you know what I'm saying, the Spanish speaking, is that why? Cause I don't understand the reason why they do like the Brazilian, I don't know the Portuguese, like I really, they normally say when it's that term and I've asked, they said normally it's car is more of a bigger population in the world of Brazilian speaking Portuguese, you know what I'm saying? Instead of the mainland Portuguese, you know what I'm But yo, slightly different I'm taking it, you know. Despite Spanish being the national language, they have three other regionally co-official languages that are allowed to be publicly used and published alongside Spanish. So we have Catalan, Galician, Basque. But Basque is a language, like it's its own age. Historically, no one knows where it comes from and doesn't what? have anything to do with Latin or any other language. There's also no other one knows where it comes from, you know. languages, like Asturias, Arabic. But I guess they're all, you can all understand each other, right? Or not? That's why. Wow. But very few people speak them and they don't really pursue to officiate. And there's other offshoot languages like Ladino, spoken by the Sephardic Jewish community. The coolest language fact though is that on the island of Gomera in the Canary Islands, they use Silbo Gomera. What was that saying? Yo. It's a language completely composed of whistles. Here's a clip if you want to hear some. But technically, is that a language? It's not really a language. No one's really saying anything except for whistling it out. Something different, right? It's unique. That's what I like. You didn't even know that. Yeah, wrong. Bro, not even my Donny. Actually, I like more than even know that. I feel special, eh? We're all learning. Yeah, we could talk about language stuff in Spain all for hours. It's crazy, but we gotta move on. Historically, the Catholic faith played a huge role in our uh, identity, despite the fact that today only about two thirds of the country, to some degree, might say that they are very less nominally identify as Catholic. And the less of the 20% of the population goes to church. But for what it's worth, we have the Camino de Santiago, one of the largest Catholic pilgrimages in the world. The interesting thing, though, is that there is noticeable traces of of Maurice Arabic influence as well. Everything from architecture and even the names of cities, for example, if they start with Al. You see, that's one thing I also picked up from like the Portuguese, uh, Portugal, I mean, um, like you got Algarve, where they say Al, Garve, and there's some other few one, two ones. So Loki is like Spain in some type of sense. 
Even how Andalusia got its name from the Arabic Al Andalus, and today there's even noticeable words. They just don't use that little Arabic line there, just all together. Like Tata or Astukar. That's oh, great. Right. Oh, yeah. Now, in regards it to asked. Spain's impact on the world, it's nothing short of massive. At one point, we had 35 colonies across the world, and today there are 19 sovereign Spanish speaking countries, plus Puerto Rico, that all have a story rooted from Spain. Yeah, you guys have a long history of Latin America. What do they think of, what do they think of Spanish people? They love Europe in general, dun, it's like, oh, Europe, dun, so, dun, I don't know, but dun, at the same time, <laughs> they have some other thoughts about it. I think they talk, she, when she's trying to say other thoughts, she's talking about old history, you know what I'm saying, where it goes deep into like how they brought the Spanish influence into like South America. Like I was talking to a Colombian the other day, he was talking about how they brought it over, you know what I'm saying, and you know, just touching more on, on them kind of touchy subjects there, so he like, he embraces it but also kind of has that side of it where it kind of bothers him like in the type way but hey well, uh, like we are lazy or <laughs> a lot of people especially in South America that think of us as very structured or like what Spanish people think of Germans oh, oh. Exactly. which is really exactly. weird for us so they kind of think you guys are like the Germans of the Hispanic world yeah, <laughs> yeah but then in Europe we are like Bankrupt. Not that. <laughs> Generalizing, though. Not Generalizing. That, but... but in regards to Spain's, you know, impact on the world, yes, we've heard the stories. Colonialism was riddled in lots of tragedy. Many wars and battles were fought. Many died. Diseases were spread. No denying Spanish these terrible flu. historical incidents. But, and right. this might be one of the most hard pill to swallow, controversial things I'll ever say in this show, given the current social climate that we live in, but you have to kind of see colonialism in all vantage points throughout its manifestation. In a weird way, many of the things that you hold dear today and the people that that you admire and the ideas that change the world may have never come about without ties to colonialism too. It's a weird paradox of chronological exchanges throughout history. I mean, for example, the wheel and beasts of burden, like horses and cattle, were brought over to the Americas. Remember in the Peru episode, we explained how the only domesticated animal that could remotely help carry cargo was the llama, and it could Damn. only carry like 80 pounds. Otherwise, people just kind of walked to get around. See, like that. History kind of has a weird way of showing you that nothing ever is completely what you think it is, and over time, it kind of evolves into something you probably never saw coming. Yes, everyone likes to condemn past tragedies, but you also have to acknowledge that it's possible for a rose to grow from concrete, you, like the invention you. of the first artificial heart in Argentina to, I don't know, Vicente Fernandez and Shakira. That's my little brief postulation <laughs> on the topic. Shakira. Take it as you will. I'm just saying, see before you decree. That was intense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was, but I, I felt like that. that. you say that in a way it's hard to judge that era with today's standards and that gets really tricky. Yeah, I mean, I've been doing this for years and I know what's coming. The Spanish people and our back story has so many diverse saying. layers. And luckily we made a video explaining all about those various groups and nationalities of Spain, so just check it out right here. Click art with the sports part. Na, 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 na. I am <laughs> existing! Here's your trophy. This is my trophy for existing. I love it. But that's besides the point. What was I saying? Go avoid. Here's your trophy. This is my Go avoid logo. See ya. Copyright. Trophy for existing. Maybe. I love it. But that's besides the point. All right, sports in Spain. So without saying much, most of you will automatically default to football. Yes, we all know that soccer is practically <laughs> a religion what... in Spain. Their national team has qualified for the FIFA Cup 15 times, hosted in 1982 and won against the Netherlands in 2010. And of course, everybody knows about the huge rivalry between Barcelona and Real Madrid. Which team are you on? But soccer Real isn't Madrid. everything for Spain. Fun fact. Their men's roller hockey team scored 16 gold medals. Everybody knows Rafael Nadal's Wimbledon championship in 2008 and 2010. Their national basketball team has won one world and two Euro basket championships. Aside from all the contemporary sports, Spain also has a rich culture of domestically produced sports. Everything the from patanque to Canarian style wrestling. I can yeah, I heard Canary. about that one once as well. I don't know, man. Those things are fast. The Basque country <laughs> that has the most native sports. Bubs is a joker. You have things like Jaya Lai, stone lifting, pole drilling, wood chopping. That's my sport right there. Coming with some Olympics there, boy. Basque country is where the running of the bulls happens. It's not really a sport, it's more of a festival, but they love it. Come like a sport, though. recorded deaths, but they still love it. And finally, I know you were thinking about it. I was thinking about it. Spanish bullfighting or Corrida de Toro. The sport dates all the way back to Roman times. Bullfighting is kind of seen as a performance art mixed with a sport. 
formed. The matador attempts to subdue, immobilize, or kill the bull in the arena. The Arabs, the Catholics, the frickin' Bourbons, they all tried to ban it, but it kept coming back. In recent years, the sport has yet again been met with a lot of backlash. In fact, it was completely banned in Catalonia in 2010. Well, I'm gonna get out of here, and you know what? I'm proud of this trophy. Thank you, Art. Yeah, people in Spain are pretty active. It's actually uh, kind of funny considering that you guys have that whole siesta culture thing, and you guys are known for being lazy. Like, oh, oh, come on. Oh. But I love it. I haven't, I haven't taken a siesta in two years. Yeah, but that's because yeah. you live here. No, but we're, I mean, <laughs> we are not lazy, guys, okay? Also, siesta doesn't make you lazy. It recharges you. It doesn't recharge you, no. <laughs> <laughs> you wake up. You know when he said it recharges you, you know it made me think Our beds is like wireless charges <laughs> I don't know why You wake up worse than you went to sleep Wow, that's Damn. all in balance Meanwhile, that's all in balance Speaking of stereotypes, uh, sending shots. Like nudity thing I thought that that was something normal in the rest of the Excuse world Excuse me? Oh. On the beach, on the beach No one pays attention to that, like, it's no anything weird But we don't go naked through the street like. Right, right so, in oh, conclusion, that... stereotype debunked, nudity is not legal in Spain, but it's okay in some beaches. Alright, enough culture talk, now we gotta move you on to Hannah, beaches. that's her segment. So now, here's Hannah. Hi guys, it is good to be back. And remember that you can get a random Hannah t-shirt at geographynow.com. It has my face, face, it has my face on it, and it's better than Keith. Ernest Hemingway. It's the Spanish, it's the, you know, you've been listening to Keith too much with a f, -f, -f with a Spanish. Made you say that, yeah? Uh, there is no nightlife in Spain. They stay up late and they get up late. That right. is not nightlife. That is delaying the day. Interestingly enough, Shame. they have one of the highest life expectancies in the world. Maybe night parties do the trick. In any case, really? Spain has been a front runner in arts and huh? literature. So many people like these have made internationally famous pieces of literature. None more famous than Miguel de Cervantes Don Quixote. In addition, she beautiful, though. so many world renowned like artists, have come, including the Spanish Trinity. Pablo Picasso, Diego Velasquez, and Francisco Goya. He had some really dark works because he went uh, deaf and the Spanish Inquisition really hated it. But of course, you cannot forget Anthony Gaudi's architecture and surrealist Salvador Dali, literally buried in his own museum. Literally the greatest of all time. Spain is a hub of many inventions, such as the spacesuit, the stapler, the predecessor to the helicopter, the gyroplane, the wheelchair, glasses, foosball, and the discovery of the elements, tungsten, vanadium, and platinum. Now, just very quickly, let's talk about some cinema stuff. Explore the political climate with movies like Pan's Labyrinth, which is actually a Mexican movie but does explore some aspects of Spanish culture and the Spanish Civil War. Take a tour of the beautiful Basque country by watching the movie Ocho Apaidos Vascos. I hope I'm saying that right. Is that right? Good enough. If you want to take a trip back to the Middle Ages and explore Spain's royalty culture, you can watch Juana la Loca. And everybody knows the famous actresses that came out of Spain like Antonio Banderas, Penelope Cruz, Javier Bardem. Anyways, you get the point. There is a way too much film history to get into right now but if you want to learn more watch filmography now guys the first official spin-off channel of geography now yeah, has a funny fact that y'all probably don't know obviously the ones that are watching this probably newcomers welcome you know what i'm saying a bit later i said that in almost the end of the video but yeah now uh, my dna is like portuguese spanish and from senegal you know what i'm saying but i got quite a high percentage from where i come from of a spanish dna you know what i'm saying so blessed to have that spanish dna you know what i'm saying shout you out Shout oh, y'all out. Shout y'all out. Spain Damn. Is Again. Literally every day you can find something happening in some part of Spain. You've probably heard of La Tomatina, La Faria in April, Semana Santa. You have that tomato festival. One thing that unifies the Spaniards that is insane. Is Everyone chucks tomatoes at them. Unfortunately, so, not themselves. I mean, I was way back <laughs> from Florida to Los Angeles. Hey, he's back. Mohamed Madera and Tony. Freaking back. Tony. 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 That's a nice way introduction. I'm back. I'm back in the studio. My segment kicks not her segment. By the way, everybody, over the years, I've worn Rush shirts many times. Everybody knows Rush is my favorite band. Blah, 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 Rush. Don't sue, whatever. Anyways, so <laughs> fun fact, and since I have such a love affair with guitars and things with strings, especially G strings, haha, <laughs> but, um, the modern classical guitar was actually invented hey, in Spain. Hey, This is buzz, actually right? a steel string. Spain is one of the very few countries that actually has no words in their national anthem. 
Each region of Spain actually has its own traditional style of music. The most well-known style of music that everybody around the world probably knows is flamenco music. Predominantly founded in the southern region of Spain in mostly the city of Seville. Highly recommend ch checking out Paco de Lucia, who's a phenomenal flamenco guitar player. I would have to explain flamenco music as a finger style on guitar. So, for example, said acoustic guitar, if you take these two, or sorry, these three Fingers and you anchor Damn, your thumb son, and you get of, less. <laughs> do this motion here. Oh, you be smoking. You can also, you, like, <laughs> use your right hand as a kind of more percussive. In addition, most regions in Spain actually have their own style of dance, which is called the Jota. The rhythms in the now. dance That's either tough. are three, four, or six, eight. It's like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's basically the same thing. It feels faster, but it's not actually feel faster. Vibe, Eventually, vibe. after the fall of the dictator. You had a bunch of amazing musicians come out, such as Rocio Jorado, La Pantoja, Joaquin Sabina, Rosalia. She's won like Rosalia. a bunch of Grammys. So I don't know. It's just like whenever I watch some like Latin soap opera or something, and I put the chick in she's the nice, dress, right? he cheated on me, and I'm just all like, whoa. Well, so that's it for Wait, me, guys. So packed, I would just like to say thanks to Paul Barbato for flying me out to here to LA. So glad to have you back here. Oh my God, it's <laughs> great to be back. Woo! I missed In and Out and all. Of the glorious fast food that <laughs> Thank you, Keith. All right, and with that, it's time to move on to the boy, friend zone. Boy. Okay. <laughs> All right, so Jose, Anna, how do you feel about the way how Spain interacts with the rest of the world? Because of the language, I feel like we might Italian feel closer maybe. to Latin American countries okay. for the most part. People think that we are not that good at English. And okay, I probably have shown in this video that I'm not that good at English. I'm sorry, I just yeah, had a long great. day, okay? You're doing great, you're doing okay? great. It's harder for us because we are, come from a Latin yeah. language. Yeah. So a German person is going to be able to understand and learn faster English yeah, Dutch do as well, man. Obviously, Spain has a huge impact on the world. So first off, of course, in Very Africa, it's special. interesting. The area of Western Sahara used to be a Spanish colony, which is now de facto run by Morocco, but with a dispute with the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic. Although Spain has never formally recognized the SADR, Spain does host a noticeable community of Sahrawi people on the Canary Islands. And on top of that, the whole Ceuta and Melilla thing kind of irks Morocco just a bit, to say the least. No. Before we carry on through this video, what's your favorite part of Spain? Hit me down below in the comment section, um, or if you're not Spanish even, so what part do you like visiting most, or where do you visit most? Give your boy some tips, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, I'm an island boy, so you're probably ready now, you I've said that a few times in this video, I'll probably go lean more into islands, but you know, there's always time in life to venture into mainlands, but you know, we've got so, such a big mainland, there's so many things to see and do, so... Nonetheless, they try to keep things cordial, and every new prime minister usually makes a trip to Morocco for their first diplomatic mission abroad. Otherwise, they have very close relations with their former colonies, the closest probably being Argentina, as they have the largest diaspora of Spaniards outside of Spain with almost half a million. And it's well known throughout the Latin world that Argentina probably has the biggest crush on Spain, so the more they get time with them, the better. Cuba and Venezuela are high up on the list too, Cuba oh, being the last American colony to gain independence, and they have always been fond of Spain's values. Venezuela specifically has very close ties to the Canary Islands. They even speak almost with the exact same saying. accent. And have As yeah, 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 yeah. Been told that too. Half of everybody on the islands have friends or family in Venezuela. Back to Europe. Madero. Andorra is like the, the Beverly thing. Hills where the Spaniards move when they hit it big and want to hide their money. However, if don't they speak French in Andorra or is it Spanish? I, I've got an uncle that lives there, you know what I'm saying? I thought he told me they speak French. We're gonna get really personal. Portugal is like the little brother they have shared every moment of their history with. And they love to see him try. Like, whenever try, Portugal accomplishes try, anything, Spain is their number one cheerleader. Like, er, Spain er, knows er. they are four times bigger and have a way heavier socioeconomic Wait, impact on Europe and the world. So, of course, let adorable well, Portugal yeah. have a Ronaldo or Magellan. They deserve some spotlight. Okay. Spain can't have it all. When it comes to their best friends, however, literally almost every single Spaniard I have talked to has said the same country, Italy. It's no uh, shock. See? When a Spaniard One and Italian the meet, right. there's an instant connection. They just share the same South Latin vibe and code of conduct that goes back millennia to the Roman Empire. They can easily learn each other's languages, they approve of the other's food and music, they both laugh at stories of crazy dictatorships and underground mafia drama over a glass of wine. In the end, evidently, Spain and Italy are the kings and queens of South Europe. Alright, and in conclusion, I think you guys should take it away. I'm out. <laughs> we are welcoming and 
um, the cool thing about Spain is like you have many different cultures within the same country, so you can live completely different experiences. We like to party. That, I'm not gonna say no. Yeah, we love that because we are social people. I yeah. think that's something that we need. Like when we watched the um, Portuguese geography, now they did say like Portugal's more of the quiet brother. You know what I'm saying? To, unlike Spain, they're more of like a party. And I can say that for me, like I'm quiet. I'm super chill. I like to live in just like oh, silence. You know what I'm saying? I'm anti-social, but you know there is quite a few people that are anti-social. But hey, you know what I'm saying? A lot of those things I took for granted being in Spain, the rich diversity yeah. or, you know, welcoming nature. And once I moved out, which more than 10 years ago, that's when I really started realizing yeah. how lucky we are to be from Spain. Yeah, yeah. have some oh. real paella. Yeah. <laughs> real I gotta try that though. Oh my god! <laughs> Thank you guys so real much for being Real you know, shots sent again. Oh well, my guy sent quite a few shots, you know. Wow, you, I'm, I don't know how she didn't come back with any, but yo. Sri Lanka is coming up next. Alright, bet yo. I hope y'all enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed checking a bit more of my Spanish brothers, amigos, you know, slash with my DNA. So, pop my family and genes, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's been a pleasure learning a bit more, even though I felt like I already knew Cam it's kind of some of the things, but yeah. Now, folks, from here on, I'll be doing a few challenges. Uh, vlogs, um, reactions will be when I feel like I've recovered because your boy is going through a very very hard time you know what I'm saying so any other videos you want me to do reactions to that's not really like music based I don't mind I prefer that more for now you know what I'm saying I'm not in really a party mood to be going into like music reactions for the moment so I hope you understand and sympathize with your boy and I'll be back someday with reactions that won't be too long maybe a month break two months break whatever it, I just naturally need to heal subscribe to the channel follow your boy on Instagram comment in the comment section share the love spread this video with others and family friends if you know y'all enjoyed it and take no offense to anything i've said that probably might have y'all might have taken an offense to i'll see y'all soon in another day's upload god bless love y'all i'm out yo